question is for um, Dr. Bishop and maybe the mayor, and maybe Dr. Uh, Zink. But so yesterday, COVID cases topped uh, 200,000 in this country. I'm sure you're well aware. We also recently learned um, from the CDC that a whopping 78% of all COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. Um, ch child deaths were from children of color, uh, even though we only make up 42% of the U.S. population. Uh, we also learned that, you know, elementary school classes are scheduled to resume uh, around October 19th. I, I have a little boy in fifth grade and I'm a teacher myself, Dr. Bishop, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, serving the ASD and I have a little boy um, who goes to school in the fifth grade as well. And uh, I, I cannot lie to you, I'm worried. Um, and I'm just, my question is, what do you say to families of color who are worried right now that, you know, if we return to classrooms, that their children will be part of that deadly 78%. And, and how are you prepared to support those families who are rightfully scared to return to the school building? Oh, that's a, a great question, uh, Daniel. And uh, just wanted to um, share, first of all, that uh, we will, we set out a target for October 19th, given the information that we know about uh, the mitigation techniques, the risk levels, uh, what we can do and what we're prepared to do in ASD uh, in regard to class sizes and minimizing the spread. Uh, the key features that are shared uh, by the CDC, the World Health Organization, as well as our local uh, health professionals is certainly masks are a must. We, we, we have to keep our masks. Uh, practice the social distancing. And we know that in schools and even when we go out in the community, many times uh, we will be in situations that we're not six foot. Uh, we might uh, you know, be within three feet and it, masks then are absolutely essential uh, so that um, the spread through those uh, droplets that are, are coming out of our noses and our mouths uh, doesn't hit someone else to keep, keep them contained. Uh, certainly, our ability to respond uh, and understand uh, how to not uh, have the virus spread. And that's really key in ASD. And, and I would say we're more prepared now with the information out there than we were uh, back in July when our case numbers uh, were in that, that yellow category then. Um, and then also contact tracing, um, that we have to understand that if uh, we can be present uh, with COVID in our community. Uh, COVID is present, if you will, uh, in the community. How can we educate young people uh, in school in a safe environment uh, to continue uh, to build on? And, and certainly I would share that uh, the disproportionalities that uh, have been demonstrated in the NASD in regard to educational outcomes, uh, I, I would say that they've probably slid further. Um, there are families, just as uh, the mayor said, that don't speak English. And so certainly being home, uh, being able to uh, educate your child being home is probably uh, you know, doubly difficult to do, even with a teacher on the other end, uh, that there are uh, just the abilities of educators and the amazing things that they do, uh, do make a difference. Um, with that, uh, all of those uh, categories plus the secondary data, uh, the new system, and I, I believe Dr. Zink can speak to this, is just looking at additional data and additional uh, data points. However, the paramount one, of course, is about cases and cases in the community. And uh, as we were planning and looking, uh, we had a 20 case day. We had an under 30 case day. Uh, we had actually dropped in a seven day average by 14% uh, one day, 22. Uh, and so we looked to say, you know, what's out in the future? If we could start, we have to begin early. And hence the announcement was made. But every two weeks we're taking a look and seeing if we need to put a halt on that and pick a date two weeks further out. It's all dependent on all of those markers, uh, as well as our ability 
to stop the secondary spread of the virus. And we have had uh, cases in our uh, program this summer in our uh, school district, as well as presently in sports. And we have ha not had a secondary uh, spread because of, uh, I believe, the mitigation uh, that has taken place. And so we'll continue to do that. But um, I'd like uh, Dr. Zink, um, actually, he called us on us all if, if there's anything to add in regard to understanding that. Um, another key feature, actually, that uh, we looked into that Dr. Chandler, uh, he is our uh, medical doctor that is um, on contract with the district and advises us. Uh, we uh, look to have within the month, if possible, if we if we do open up on the 19th or even if it's later, uh, an ability to do rapid testing. Uh, there, the testing uh, is becoming more and more affordable, about five dollars, uh, whereby we could uh, test students right in our nurse's office. So we are uh, looking into that with our medical professionals in the district, and that would be added. Uh, so I would certainly encourage families to make their own choices because certainly um, we have different options. Uh, different people in our community have different uh, feelings about the virus and risk levels or uh, family members at home that might be ill, family members that live with them that are elderly, that are in a, a higher risk category. And uh, whether that's, you know, uh, continuing virtual learning, we're certainly willing to support that. Uh, but for those families also that uh, choose to come back, if we can come back, uh, we wanted to, to make that an offering. But again, it, we can't just turn school back on. It takes a lot of training for our teachers, uh, especially in, in the PPE and the safety precautions, as well as for our parents and students in regard to the expectations about how it's not going to look like it once did. It will look very different uh, in the classroom and going into the school. I'm glad you talked about the rapid testing. It, sorry to cut Dr. Zink off, but that was gonna be a follow-up question of mine, Dr. Bishop. And um, could you expound on the rapid testing just a, a, just a, a hair bit, please? I'm just, that, that, that one kind of concerns me, um, please. <laughs> I don't have specific information. Uh, we are at the school board meeting going to have our senior director of nursing and healthcare uh, speak speak to that. Uh, I'm certainly sure that uh, Dr. Chandler can. Um, really, my, my lane isn't that uh, in the medical area, um, but we are looking into being able to test right in our schools uh, so that we can identify quickly uh, whether a symptom uh, that we see because all symptoms, ASD is going to be symptom free. So uh, a regular symptom of something that might be an allergy or something like a common cold, a student would be asked to, to go home, but uh, we would also uh, have some testing uh, to determine that to support our families. Yeah, and to build off of that, Daniel, I really appreciate your question. First of all, you know, I just want to pause on just that comment that you made about the 200,000 lives that have been lost. And uh, it was a really humbling uh, milestone that our country reached, as well as, you know, the data that came out at the disproportional effect of children uh, of minorities in, in this country. And it was a, it was a really, um, you know, uh, just a, a humbling report again to read. A couple different things in thinking about schools. It's hard to know what is right to do. It's what is mitigation and what's not mitigation. Uh, I know of families who uh, have, the mother has gotten sick with COVID and has refused hospitalization because she had no one to care for her nine-year-old child uh, and had to go to work and didn't know what else to do. We have families who have no other way to support their family and loved ones if they are at the hospital or if they don't have school. We also know that younger kids uh, benefit a lot from being in person uh, and that their early education uh, really makes a big difference for kind of that in-person learning. And we also see other disease processes such as uh, meningococcal disease where sometimes school can be a form of mitigation in and of itself. So <laughs> if you've got a teacher uh, watching and keeping masks on and keeping people six feet apart, uh, you might be mitigating COVID better than if everyone's just hanging out at a friend's house uh, on the side uh, without having kind of that a, a teacher and, and uh, caring adult kind of in their life because uh, parents are busy and other things are going on. I think there's also just a tremendous amount of COVID fatigue going on right now. And so it's really hard to know kind of what the right balance and, and, and where the right mark is on that. Um, the CDC did release uh, additional guidance that came out just last week. Um, we have a couple social media posts and other things kind of explaining it compared to our alert levels. If you do take a look at that, it's important to know that theirs is a cumulative number of cases, 
uh, over a 14 day period, not a per day. And our alert level is a per day. So it's care, you gotta be just a little careful comparing apples to oranges on those different graphs since we have a graph kind of comparing those two, uh, just in general to take a look at. Um, but the, more and more again, we see these mitigation efforts uh, making a really big difference. So when we see schools be a symptom-free school, uh, like the Anchorage School District is seeing, that really helps uh, to keep all diseases out. Uh, we had, you know, schools close last year because of influenza. And so uh, we have had schools close in the past because of other infectious diseases, helps keep influenza, RSV, and COVID at bay. Rapid testing, these antigen tests, which are the ones that uh, Dr. Chandler and others are looking at after the schools, HHS uh, has committed antigen testing to schools. Uh, we still don't know the timing of the arrival of those and we are waiting uh, for that and then trying to get those out. We have drafted a kind of recommendation for school testing uh, to use kind of the rapid test to minimize uh, the extent of spread and working with the medical communities to get as quick as we possibly can uh, testing back for families to make sure that uh, kids with any symptoms. It is really important that you or anyone that you know or love has any symptom that could be consistent with COVID get tested. This is not a disease that's easy to be made clinically. And so you may just feel like you have allergies or a headache or runny nose or diarrhea. Any of those can be a sign of COVID. And don't wait a week to see if it gets better. Get tested early because you may expose someone for a long period of time during that time. And that's going to just be critical as we head into this fall and winter. So if there's one thing, two things I could have you guys take away from this, one would be the flu shot. And two, it'd be to get tested early if you have any signs or symptoms. Don't think this doesn't feel like COVID. Chances are you probably never had COVID, so you're not sure what it feels like. And as a clinician, this is a humbling disease. It is so hard to pick up as a clinician. Um, and so that's why the test is such an important uh, tool for it. And so it's going to be really important for schools uh, moving forward that any kid who has symptoms, we have access to rapid, quick testing uh, to identify if that's COVID or not so that uh, kids can get back to school, but we can also minimize spread. And as Dr. Bishop said, you know, we have not had any cases uh, spread within actually any school within Alaska so far. So we've had cases with Matsu being in place uh, for almost a month now. Uh, we haven't had a single case of secondary transmission. Uh, and that's been great to see. We've had whole classrooms out for a 14 day quarantine period, tested all those kids prior to coming back in, all of them were negative. So those masks and those distancing work. And so we need people to do it both in and out of school. I was actually listening to a virology re report today and they said their biggest concern is not kids being in school, it's what kids do after school. And if the symbol of being in school makes people think it's okay to mingle, that that is gonna be a bigger risk than actually what happens in schools. And so back to our community, it's what we do in our community, both in and out of school, that's gonna play a big role for how schools go uh, this fall and this winter. I just wanna chime in and point out that the COVID tests are free. You can go get free COVID tests. So people shouldn't ever use that as a barrier. That's good to know. Thank you for that. I'm, I 